There are obviously a lot of really strong characters in Tower of God. You've got your bombs and your coons, you've got your rankers, people from the Tangrate families and all those people, but you do also have weaker characters and there's nothing wrong with that. However, some of these weaker characters are actually stronger than you might think, at least in my opinion. So today we're gonna go through five characters that I think are stronger than most people give them credit for and list the reasons why I think they should be considered at least a little stronger than what we currently think. As always, if you like these kind of videos, hit that like button and subscribe because we upload every single day here on the channel, lots of Tower of God content and all kinds of fun stuff. So subscribe if you wanna be a part of this awesome and growing community. So right off the bat, number five is gonna be Kasuno. Now Kasuno hasn't shown up in a really long time. The last we really saw him do anything was the Hell Train Saga, but Kasuno is kind of a beast. He's kind of a powerhouse. I know he gets picked on a lot because of story reasons and whatnot, but Kasuno is really ridiculously strong. And the reason he's at number five is because people do know that he's strong, but I feel like people don't understand how strong he really is, especially how he really was. So let's start at the beginning, right? Kasuno has defeated Hots, not once, but twice. Devil's right arm, he's defeated Hots twice. Now you could say, oh, he broke his sword and whatever. No, he, he beat Hots fair and square. And the second time Hots put up a really good fight, he damaged him in the arm and whatnot, but Kasuno barely broke a sweat and he defeated him and walked away. Like, that's kind of saying a lot because we, we think of Hots as being really strong and Kasuno kind of just mollywopped him twice. Now, keeping that in mind, that's just with one arm. Let's take a look at Horyong, because Horyong was also really strong, and now Kasuno has both powers combined. So we know that Horyong was able to fight against Ron and Nobik and sort of hold his own for a little bit. Horyong was a beast, right? Kasuno is a beast. Combined, he's a double beast. Now the thing about it is Wang Nan was able to sort of show him up twice, but that was because he had Shinsu bombs literally developed to defeat him and take down living ignition weapons. So it's kind of cheating, you know, it's kind of like saying, I have this really strong Charizard, but he's paired up against a Blastoise every time. The Charizard's still really strong, but he hasn't been able to show his potential. Now, of course, Kasuno gave back his devil power to Horyong as far as we can see. So it's hard to say how strong he is now, but at his peak, Kasuno was ridiculously powerful, and I think a lot of people do not give him enough credit for that. Number four is everyone's favorite character, Rachel. Now, don't get me wrong, Rachel is really weak. Rachel is way below average when it comes to being a regular and especially an irregular. She basically doesn't even count as an irregular. She, she does count, but she cheated. She doesn't really deserve the title, whatever. So she's by far the weakest irregular we've ever seen. But even as far as comparing her to other regulars, she's very weak, right? She, she's barely shown any talent whatsoever. However, she has shown some talent and I feel like we don't give her that credit, you know? So in the first season, she was the best seed for Lightbearer alongside Kuhn, right? And at the end of the whole testing arc and whatnot, she was gonna be one of the two people who were chosen for the Lightbearer position. That doesn't say a lot. She beat out obviously weaker people, people who were pretty low power, but it does show that she does have some skill with Lightbearing. And we have seen her use various skills throughout the series, very basic lighthouse abilities, but she also learned a compression skill. And this surprised Kuhn. He was like, wow. You know, at first he just kind of sliced through the lighthouse. It wasn't a big deal, but the second time it kind of caught him off guard. And it may be the only thing that she really developed, but it is something, right? It is something. She's not completely useless. Now I'm not counting this Stingray or Icarus or anything like that. Rachel's raw talent is not non-existent, right? Even if it's 5%, 10%, it's still something. So I need to give her that credit. People tend to think of her as completely useless in battle. When she does have some talent, we gotta give her that credit. And obviously we'll see how much stronger she gets with these upcoming wishes. I can't wait. Number three is Barrow Barrow. Barrow Barrow is one of the weaker, less known characters on Bomb's team throughout the series. However, she's pretty strong. Okay, so if you don't know, Barrow Barrow is the candy eating girl who is on the same team with Eater Day and whatnot. She was introduced during the Hell Train Saga and she sort of stuck around on Bomb's team throughout season two. We don't know where she is in season three. Who knows if we'll ever see her again? But I do want to talk about her because 
People tend to look down on her. Even in the show itself, they make fun of her for that. But she's actually a pretty pretty strong regular. So obviously she fought against Wellstar Elliot briefly during the first round of the dollar show. And at 80% sugar power, because she eats candy to get more powerful, she was able to kind of, she was able to surprise him and, and hold her own. He even was, the reason she was fighting him so angrily was because he killed her teammate. And he was thinking to himself like, maybe I shouldn't have killed her teammate. Like, holy cow, she's pretty strong. So that was only 80% of her sugar power as well. I think that says something. Um, well, Sir Elliot was not, he was holding back a lot, obviously. But it's still worth pointing out that Barrow Barrow was able to fight Wellstar Elliot, who was ridiculously strong. Now, on top of that, her team won the tournament at Train City. So her and Eater Day and all the other uh, two other teammates or something, they won the tournament at Train City. So again, that says that they're above average when it comes to other regulars. So when we when we look down on Barrow Barrow, it's not that she's weak. It's that she's weak compared to people like Kuhn and Bomb and Endorsey and Sachi. It's like, yeah, you're kind of cheating when you're comparing her to those people. So Barrow Barrow, I think, deserves some more recognition when it comes to power. She also has a secret ignition weapon that Yuri commented on that we've never seen. You know, do with that information as you will. I don't know if it's like an ignition candy or something that makes her go 200%. We'll see, or maybe we'll not see. I don't know, but Barrow Barrow, I think, deserves her spot at number three. Number two, the only ranker on this list is my boy, Karaka. Karaka is made fun of a lot because he's hyped up as this slayer, right? He's the slayer of Fog, the newest slayer. But every time he's about to show his skill, the fight gets interrupted or something happens, and so people think that Karaka isn't as strong as he really is. Now, Karaka isn't a high ranker, however, he's close, right? He's kind of crossing that boundary, like he could become a high ranker, and he could qualify as a high ranker soon. He's probably in fact, he is strong enough to be one. So even though he isn't technically a high ranker, I think we can sort of associate him as a high ranker. And like I said, the reason why is because the fights keep getting interrupted and Karaka hasn't been able to showcase his skill. There is a reason that this guy is a slayer. So we, we should not forget that, right? This guy was made a slayer, meaning he is ridiculously talented. Now, Keeping that in mind, Karaka is also more of a defensive fighter, so I feel like it's not really fair to judge him entirely. He's not using atomic punches like Yuri and explosions like Calavan, right? He's different, he's not that kind of fighter, and that's fine. He uses more shields and utility skills and tactics and dark moves out of the, you know, it's different. And also, he's immortal. It's, it's almost impossible to kill Karaka. Not to mention he fought on par with Yuri. And even Yuri said if she lets this guy live, he might become her worst enemy. Meaning he's gonna get even stronger, okay? This guy is talented, he's new at the game, and yet he's already able to fight on par with Yuri. We don't know, you know, Yuri's probably stronger, whatever. Who knows, we could have that debate. But regardless, he did fight her and was able to impress her. That says a lot. Karaka deserves more recognition, for sure. Especially since he's made fun of so much. We can keep making fun of him. Karaka's my boy. And finally, number one on this list. Who is it? <laughs> I forget. Wait, who did I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. And finally, number one on this list is Yan Iwa. Now, I talk about a lot about Iwa on this channel because she's one of my favorite characters. She is best girl, in my opinion, in Tower of God. But talking about her raw power, Iwa's a little bit insane. Now, I feel like she gets sidelined a lot by people who read Tower of God and, and, and talk about Tower of God. When they talk about the strong members of Bomb's team, they talk about, oh, Kuhn and Dorsey, even Rack and people who come in temporarily like Hots and all these people, but they don't commonly mention Iwa, even though she's always been there. Well, she's been there for a lot of the action, I should say. And her potential and even just her current strength now is out of this world. Now, now hear me out. You might you maybe don't know this about Iwa, but her talent is is truly special even among the Yan family and there's countless hints to this. First of all, we know at the beginning of season 2 that her flame is so hard to control and so powerful that even her family rankers had a hard time stopping it and controlling it. And these are people who have lived their whole lives surrounded by the Yan flame, okay? 
that's already a big deal. Now, moving on from there, we know that Iwa, when she finally was able to control her power, she was able to incinerate um, Beta's parasite with e like she, she once once she gained precision, she was much more useful to the squad. But even past that, on the Hell Train, she defeated Angel Raguel, right? Who was plaguing the team for a really long time. No one was able to fight her. Huarayun wasn't able to fight her. Barrow Barrow wasn't able to fight her. But Iwa took her out with kind of kind of relative ease once she was able to like unlock that fury of the flame thing or whatever. So. That says a lot about Iwa. Now, she has lost other fights because, but here's the thing. She's not able to fully control her power and she hasn't fully unlocked it yet. So keeping that in mind, if we look at Hell Train Iwa when she fought Angel and keep in mind that she's going to become way, way, way stronger, she deserves number one on this list by far. No one talks about that. Now, SIU has said a lot of very interesting things about Iwa. He has said that if she was able to fully control her flame, she would be on par with Ron and even put him to shame, is what he said. Like, he would, she could be even stronger than Kun Ron. That's really strong, okay? She would surpass him. And he said that if you think about season one versus season two, Iwa is like the endorsee of season one to the current team in season two. Iwa is kind of like the current endorsee to, to SIU. Especially, he said this back during the beginning of season two. Now, that comes with the, the sort of stipulation that she's able to control her flame perfectly. But think about that. Iwa is like the endorsee of season two, at least the early stages. That's ridiculous. And I think we need to talk more about that. Iwa does not get the attention she deserves in general, but especially when it comes to her fighting ability. You know, it's not fair to look at the bad fights where she wasn't able to control her flame. You can you can consider that, but when you look at her her actual potential and what she's going to become, I think she's going to become one of the most useful and powerful members of Bomb's team going into the future. So Iwa definitely deserving her number 1 spot, especially as my best girl. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Really hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, all that fun stuff. We have a Discord server where we talk about Tower of God a lot. Link is in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, the Patreon link is also in the description. Thanks once again. I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.